friends. I'm Christy from the Crosshatch Quilter and this is Gus or Santa Paws and today is Saturday December 11th and this is floss tube number 19. Welcome to my sewing room. Um, I hope that you've been having a wonderful holiday season. We've been I'm sure just like you so busy trying to wrap up everything for the holiday season from sewing uh, gifts, stitching gifts, just decorating, trying to get school wrapped up. Haley has her last week of school. Um, she, this week was the main last week and then she has a few days next week. So I was going to film last week, but it was such beautiful weather that we spent every single day outside. It was just, it was in the fifties and we took this big guy walking every day and just spent time as a family. It was so wonderful. And looking at the weather forecast last week, we knew that this week was going to be um, snowmageddon. <laughs> and it's been, it's so beautiful. We woke up yesterday morning to, oh, I'd say about a foot of snow. But it's always the first snow of the season. It's so pretty because all the trees are just completely covered and they haven't lost all their leaves yet. And so they still just look so pretty everything's clean and white snow and it just kind of gets you in the mood for for christmas so that's what we've been up to i hope that you've been enjoying stitching and crafting and family time so um i have a lot to share with you today i have finishes starts whips um some previous finishes and some plans of course plans are always made to be broken though <laughs> Um, so let's get started. So as you can see from my intro video, I've been busy decorating and most of my decorations are cutesy. They're from Haley's and Dylan's childhood and they're just very, um, you know, childlike. And I will keep those around. My kids love tradition and so anytime I talk about like changing up decor they're like no 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 we like the same thing which I totally understand but when they you know when I'm an empty nester then I will probably have more adult decor for Christmas but um, one room that I did change up this year was I hung up my canned pears quilt and I made this a few years ago it's canned pears by fig tree quilts and it just it's one of my very favorite quilts I've ever made I was so excited to put it up and it made me smile from ear to ear to think about all of my friends that are just on team pair right now. <laughs> um, Catherine from Stitching and Costume, she has been on a, a Stitching Pairs kick this year and Susan Stanley here on Floss Tube as well. And so it just has a special place in my heart. I've got some really dear treasures here from sweet friends my friend joanna made me this stitched christmas pair and then she embroidered the other yeah the she embroidered the other pairs um, and i just absolutely love them i keep them up year i keep them out year round and then this cute little vintage tree is full of stitched treasures from dear friends as well i've got a couple on there from cindy um cindy c stitches on instagram and she, they're, they're my favorite ornaments. So they, I wanted to put them on their own special tree. I don't have very many stitched ornaments. That's all I have. And so it's just, it's just perfect right there. I love it. So it's just a fun corner in my sewing room that makes me think of stitching and friends. What, but what better thing is there, right? Um, so I have some previous finishes to share with you today. The um, first one is baby it's cold outside and I stitched this a couple of years ago in honor of Leanne with Lost in Floss and I got a frame this year this is by Heartstring Samplery and I absolutely love this piece I'll keep it out all winter that's what I love about this piece so much is that it it's not just Christmas it's winter it can be up all the winter long six months that I get here in Vernal Utah <laughs> so there that's baby it's cold outside and then my very favorite, this is my very favorite piece that I've ever stitched so far, which is hard because I love them all. They're all my favorites, but 
and I've told you this before about this one, but this is Christmas at Hollyberry Farm. And I stitched it with all the called for. So it's Christmas at Hollyberry Farm by Stacy Nash. I don't think I said that. And I stitched it with all the called for threads, I believe on 28 count mink by R&R. &R. So it was two strands of floss over two threads. So it's a big, big piece, but I actually love that, how big it turned out. It took a lot of skeins. <laughs> I remember the, I think this is Piney Woods, and I can't remember what the red is, but I went through probably three or four, um, you know, skeins of it, and then for the white on the house, because I did two strands. So, but I love, love, love that piece. And I keep it up year round over here in the corner. Um, but right now it's replaced with one of my old, old, old um, Christmas stitches. I don't remember the name of it. It's, it's vintage. <laughs> so, but I have some new finishes as well. The first one is I worked on Prairie Schooler 2006 Santa. And I absolutely am 100% addicted to Prairie Schooler Santas now. This is my very first one that I've ever stitched, and it most definitely won't be my last. I just barely put the last final stitches in it um, yesterday, so I didn't have time to fully finish it, but I'm going to turn it into a little pillow with an ornament hook. So I, I want to have a whole Prairie Schooler tree now. Like so many of you have, I have FOMO every time I see all your beautiful pictures on Instagram. So what I did is I kitted as many of them up as I could, and I'm keeping them in my Santa bag here. And because it's going to be a long-term project, um, I mean, who knows how long it will take me. I, I'm i so bad about stitching Christmas year-round, so I, I really don't know, you know, I don't have any set goals yet, but I would love to... Um, have them all stitched one day and up on my tree. So I put them all on these cute little Santa floss tags with all of the, like I just went through all of them. They all mainly call for the same threads, right? So they're all just going to be dedicated in here in my bag. And I've got quite a few. I can't decide which one I want to stitch next. Probably that one. I don't know. They're We'll see. I, I hate to always tell you plans because I always break them. And then I found this on Etsy this month and I have always wanted to stitch this um, stocking and I love, I love all the ornaments. So we'll see how far I get, but just thought it, it was, I had fun kidding it up at least. So who knows how long it will, I'll stick with it. <laughs> January 1st, usually maybe even December 26th, I'm usually like, I'm done. I'm over Christmas stitching. And I've stitched a ton of Christmas stuff this year and I'm already starting to like, oh, I'm, I'm over Christmas stitching in a way. Now winter stitching is a little bit different. I can stitch that all through like March and, and you know, still be in, involved and have my head in the game on that one. So my next finish and I didn't get the chart out, but it is The Gather In by Plum Street Samplers. And I started this with Lori Holt and Lara of Brenda and the Serial Starter. And I absolutely, I love, love, love this. Um, it was so fun to stitch this in the month of October, November. And I will, I will always remember watching Sleepy Hollow with my daughter while I was stitching on this. Um, it's the series that has, I don't know how to say his name, is it Tom Tim Minson? I probably just put, totally butchered his name. But it's the series and I think it has four seasons. We were absolutely, we just fell in love with that series and it was so fun to watch that and stitch on this. So I will always remember that. And my new, my new obsession, now that we have finished Sleepy Hollow, is I am been watching The Wheel of Time, and that is on Amazon Prime. Lori is the one that suggested that to me, and oh my goodness, I am I love it so far. It's just a great, great show, so go check it out if you haven't. So I stitched the Gather In on 
36 count hog bristle by Fox and Rabbit. And this is my first time stitching on their linen. I absolutely love it. It's one of my new favorite linens. I used all the called for threads except for the black I used MPI um, black silk. And then on the grass, I used Piney Woods by Classic, no, Pine Needles by Classic Colorworks. And the only changes that I made were um, when I started to do the over one right here underneath Calliope, I, because I changed the main green, then the lighter green that the chart called for looked, it just looked like it was a sign in the middle of the grass. So I unpicked it over under over one I unpicked like a couple rows after I didn't like it and I just stitched it with the same green and I really do in person it looks really good it you can see Calliope the gentle steed um really well in person and I really am so happy with how it turned out I love this piece so much as you know I'm just obsessed with fall so it it checked off all the boxes for me so I am so excited to have this done. And I text Lori, I think it was a Friday night we finished it. And I text her the next morning and I said, oh, I'm, I'm all done stitching except for the over one. I was still doing the over one fill in here under Calliope. And she goes, I finished last night too. So that was funny. It wasn't planned, but it was funny that we both finished at the same time. So, and we have a few other um, pieces that we're going to be working on. So after I finished the gather in, um, I picked up on that following Sunday, Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs. And I told you last time, it's part of my stitching rotation and my plans that I was going to start working on Christmas Garden every Sunday through the month of December. Well, I started in November and I really didn't have any plans of finishing this, but I just, I picked it up on that Sunday and I just couldn't couldn't put it down. Um, I will insert a picture here of where it was last time. And I finished it. This is one of my all time very favorite pieces. I am so glad to finally have it done. It's been a long term whip. It's one of my oldest whips. I think it is my oldest whip, but it no longer now, right? And I stitched this with the called for threads on 28 count fog by picture this plus it is just so elegant and oh, I don't know how it's just classic it will be in it's one of those pieces that isn't trendy it will be in style for hopefully my grandchildren's lifetime so I um, stitched this in honor of my maternal genealogical line and it was so fun to think of Christmas past and all those bittersweet memories and all the traditions that make um, Christmas just nostalgic as I was stitching on this. So I stitched, <clears throat> I stitched my initials right here and I used everyone's maternal, their maiden last name. So there's mine. And then here's my daughter, Haley. And you've all met her. And then up here, I stitched my mom, who is Iva Vicky Lane, and she was born on August 9th, 1948, and she died August 12th, 1993. And I'll insert a picture of her right here. And I put my grandma right here, so my mom's mom, and her name is Isla Beth Roberts, and I just called her grandma. But July 17th, 1924 is when she was born and she passed away October 4th, 2000. And then her mom, and I, I believe the pr correct pronunciation is Audelay. Um, she, she, whenever my grandma and my mom talked about her, I always heard them call her Tilly, Grandma Tilly. But it's Audelay Adele Bolschweiler and she was born on February 23rd 1897 and she passed away March 9th 1962 and then her mom so Adelaide is of German descent I believe that name and her dad's line came from Germany and then um, Anna Elizabeth Bauer she was born August 6th 1871 and she passed away November 1st 1931 
So I'm really excited to have this. Oh, I can't wait to get it framed. I am um, going to Salt Lake to see family for Christmas and I get to also spend some time with my dear friend Lori and her family. And while I'm there, I'm going to take a few pieces to get framed. And I haven't decided if I'll wait until like summertime to get this framed, but I do have some pieces here I have set aside to take with me. And I also am picking up, she has three pieces there of mine. Two are ready to be picked up, so I'll be certain to show you those next time. And I'm excited because they're Christmas pieces and I want to get them up on my Christmas wall. But the first one that I'm going to take with me to get framed is um, Sarah Casey Unwin by Chessie and Me. And I stitched this in honor of my mom. Oh, I can't wait to get this one framed. I'm so excited. So then the next one that I'm going to take is, this is Boughs of Holly by uh, Brenda Gervais. And this is an oldie buddy goodie. I checked her... I checked her website, uh, Country Stitches Online, and I believe this is still on there. It's been a couple weeks, but I, I believe it's still on there. Um, I ordered this directly from her, and I stitched this a couple years ago. I've always just hung it, like, over a board, but I think I want to get this framed with, like, a really rustic, like, I don't know, like a barn frame or maybe, like, a darker one to pop the, the blackbirds there. But I really am excited. I really want to start focusing on... Um, a winter wall and not Christmas but winter pieces and so of course snowmen are going to be involved in that. So I'm excited to get those um, taken to be framed and I um, like I said I have three pieces out for framing but I did put together a Christmas wall and I'll insert a video of that here. With all of the holiday hustle and bustle, I don't, I didn't feel like I had as much whips and stitching to show you as I normally do. But then, then when you get it all compiled together, I'm like, oh, I guess I have a little bit more than I thought I did. Um, but one of the things that I worked on since I've last seen you, I knew I was going to pick back up on a, on a special specific day. And that is Hannah Tingey from the Scarlet House, 1823. And I started this with um, many of you on Instagram and some fun special friends here on FlossTube. Um, Michelle with Cozy Egg and Carol the Saltbox Stitcher and Christine with Hollis Hands Creates. They all started stitching it with me. I know that Penny Tucker on Instagram started it. I know I'm forgetting people, but it was just a fun special start. And I started it last Thanksgiving while I was waiting for, you know, the turkey to cook and, and everything to get done. So it was a small start, but in between everything, that's when I started it. So this year I did the same thing. I picked it up um, after dinner was over and I have it housed here in my Christmas bag. I am stitching it with all the um, silk, lovely silk conversion from the attic and they're in flossway bags so they're not you know as easy to show you but they are absolutely yummy to stitch with I love this working on this so much and this is 36 count Luna by um, 
oh goodness, I can't remember the name of the, <laughs> but anyway, so I, Lakeside Linens, 36 count Luna by Lakeside Linens. So on Thanksgiving, I started working on this tree and I just had the stag done here and everything else that you see, but I didn't have the tree in or the house started. So I started working on the tree and then over the next couple days, I started outlining the house. So I absolutely love stitching on this and it's got a special place in my heart since so many of you joined me and I really want to um, make this one of my finishes that I have planned for the year 2022. So it's, it's definitely going to get a lot more love and you'll be seeing it in the future. And thanks for joining in stitching that with me. And it's still not too late. It's just um, Hannah Tingy 1823 Sal, I believe, on Instagram. So then my next whip that I worked on is housed for the holiday season. I always have to get all my Christmas bags out. But this is my Lori Holt Cozy Christmas Bag. And that is Ann Rayner. And I am stitching this with my good friend Yvette. And she has been poking me and prodding me along to get me to pick this back up because I'd had it started a few years ago and then I'd set it down. And then my friend Lily, who is um, Silky Quilt Farm on Instagram, she is stitching it with me. So I have no excuse. I have to stick with it and and I love this piece. My only challenge has been the 40 count linen. Um, it's a really tight weave. It's tighter than normal. And it's just been a challenge, even, even the not over one stitching, just the regular. But so I kind of was like, oh, every time I had to pick it up and it was towards the end of the month, I was like, oh, I have to get my homework done. Um, so I'm so glad that I have I have homework assignments on this project. But um, Penny Tucker told me to use some beading needles and for the over one. So I ordered them and I got John James size 10 and they have the ballpoint bead. They have the ballpoint tip so that it's not sharp, it's just blunt. These are a game changer. I highly, highly suggest these. I use this with the over one stitching on the gather in and it, it, like I said, it was a game changer. I didn't um, struggle at all doing the one over one. But on this piece, I have been using it to do all the other regular crosses as well. Because this is just seems like such a tight piece of linen I've got here. I love it. It's so creamy and yummy. It's creme brulee 40 count by R&R. &R. And um, so since I've seen you last, I got a little bit more done down here. I stitched this mama sheep and the little flowers or mushrooms whatever those are and then did the fill in grass <laughs> but as you can see i didn't finish with the baby sheep this is the one that's all over one and i'll get back to it i i'm gonna finish it i just i just i a friend told me actually it was penny that told me order some tudor silks or some swasserfine and so i need to give the attic a call i think that that will also help my anxiety level on it. I'm just, I'm a newbie when it comes to over one, but it's specifically over 40 count, but it's just a challenge. But I love that piece. And oh, so December's um, project is just to do more of the um, border up top and the alphabet. So I can do that. That's easy this month. December was a perfect month to have an easy uh, homework assignment. <laughs> okay, so my next project goes on my winter wall, and this is housed in my Sweet Christmas by Urban Chicks. This fabric line, I've had so many of you message me recently and ask me if I can make more of these bags, and I don't have any more fabric. I wish I did. Um, I've looked online, and everyone liked it as much as we did, and it was it's a couple years old, but you just can't find it anymore. But what I've got in there is... Um, all bundled up by Brenda Gervais. And I started this, oh, I don't even think it was last year. I think it was two years ago. I don't think I even worked on it last year. I don't remember. But I will insert a picture here of where it was. And 
this is what I've been doing as my smalls since we last saw each other. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to get some water. And I absolutely love this piece. I, I would love to get it finished before next week so I can take this to get framed, but I don't know if that's even going to be possible. There's a lot of fill in there. Um, but I worked on doing more of his outline and his face. I needed to give him some more um, flowers for this gorgeous cardinal to sit on. And I'm looking forward to having this up on my winter wall one day. So then I told you last time that once I finished the gather in, I wanted to start and heaven and nature sings. And I can't find my, my chart must be in the other room because I was just stitching on it. But I will insert a picture of the chart here. And this is he And Heaven and Nature Sings by Kathy Barrick. And I am stitching this on Mayflower linen, 36 count by R&R, &R, with all the called for NPI silks except for one. I changed the very lightest green to a, a darker green. And here are all the silks. The, oh, this project is so yummy. I, I love stitching on silks. Just, they're just my favorite. Um, but this project, so <laughs> Lori um, messaged me when I told her I wanted to get this started. She goes, I want to start it too. And so the night that I picked it up and gave it a start, I decided to start right in the middle. Well, what's in the middle is these cardinals and then the backs, the deer back and butt. <laughs> and so I text her a picture and I said, well, I've started the deer butt. And um, I'm just working on doing the outline right now. I don't normally start in the middle of this pro of a project, but this one, it just seemed logical to me for some reason. But... There's going to be lots and lots of filling on this one, of course. And so I just thought, oh, I'll get him outlined first. And then I can do all the other doodads um, here and there as I go. So Lori picked hers up and started hers the other day. And it's so pretty. So I'm really excited to be working on this um, with her. And if you guys have this chart, let's pick it up and stitch on it with us. Like I told you, I'm going to go to Salt Lake to see family and friends for Christmas. And I'm going to take this with me and Lori and I are going to have a fun stitching it together. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I just have a couple little smalls that I've started, worked on. Um, like I told you, I'm starting to burn out on Christmas stitching. Winter stitching not, but Christmas stitching. So I'm coming to an end here soon, so I don't know how much further I'll work on any other Christmas projects, but I've got these housed in my bag from my sweet friend, Livia, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. I love the vintage little kids and angels. Um, so in there, I've been working on Merry Friends by um, Brenda Gervais, and just have a little bit of a start. It's not a very big project. I am stitching this on, I think, Old Town Blend by r, &R 36 count with all the called for threads. I am planning on finishing in the tart, like on the picture. I ordered the tart pan from Amazon. And so that one's a cute, fun stitch. I, I could probably finish this, right? Um, and then the other one that I pulled out and I put a couple stitches in the other day and then um, I just, I don't know, I sat it down but I need to get back to it because this is, I think I started this last year but maybe it was the year before that. And that is Lottie Da, a, Mer a Merry Christmas sampler. I love that. I might get this one framed instead of finishing into a pillow. So this is on 36 Count Winter's Brew. And I switched out some of the threads, um, like the gold is Yield Gold, and the red is Ruby Slippers by Gentle Arts. 
but all the others are the called for DMC. So that one I could fin I could get these two finished. So even though I'm wrapping up my Christmas stitching for the year, I the, at the beginning of the season, I went through all of my Christmas charts and I put together the ones that I really, really want to stitch. Um, I have them all separated so that and kitted up. I spend a lot of time doing that over a course of a few days so that when I do want to start them and I get the I get the desire, um, I can just go and grab one and they're in my they're separated into a bag of just all my very, very favorite ones. Um, and on that subject, I I kit and store all of my charts by category, not designer. Um, I don't know why, but that just helps my brain to figure things out. So if I forget about a chart, um, it's not stuck in that designer's um, box. I have it kitted with all of the Christmas stuff. I do an autumn box. I have a Halloween box, um, summer and patriotic. Um, in the summer bag, I do like bees and, you know, flowery things as well. Spring has Eastern floral as well, things like that. So um, I thought I would show you the things around my um, immediate radar as far as the next year or two of Christmas things I want to stitch. <laughs> so all that to say, this is what I've got going. Um, I really want to stitch Christmas 1878 by Pineberry Lane. And I kitted that up with the called for threads and I believe the called for linen. Love that. And this one is the top of my list. I considered starting it this year, but I just ran out of time. I had some secret stitching I had to do and um, gifts to make. And so it seems like my stitching window for Christmas is always very narrow because I'm always making gifts, which I don't mind. I love doing that as well. So, um, but this is early Christmas morning by Blackbird Designs. I absolutely love this. This is probably at the top of the of the list. And then I still want to stitch um, Winter um, Winter Manor. Is that what it's called? Winter Rose Manor by Brenda Gervais. I started this like three times last year, and each linen choice just wasn't the ticket. It just didn't work. Um, after watching Carol Saltbox Stitcher, she said that she's going to stitch hers on Winter Brew, um, that she had had a friend stitch it on that. And I had a piece of Brenda's Brew, I had some Winter's Brew, and the Brenda's Brew was a little bit pink, but this one, with all the called for threads, it just pops the colors and looks absolutely perfect. I don't have my threads on a, f <laughs> on a floss ring yet but all the threads look absolutely beautiful. Um, I pulled some extra greens too. They called for Oscar and Olive sometimes, is it Olive? They just sometimes don't work for me with the linen I choose. It's a little bit um, too olivey. No, I love olive green. I don't know what it is, but so there's the reds and greens. I think they really pop nicely on that linen. So I'm really looking forward to getting that started. And this isn't a Christmas, you know, this is winter. So I absolutely, I am really excited to stitch this sooner than later. Love it. And of course I, you know, made it its bag to go in. I've seen a lot of you stitching on this um, and posting your progress and they're all just absolutely beautiful. So then um, <laughs> here's the bag of radar Christmas stitching. So I'll just, I won't show you everything, but one of the things that oh, I'm dying to start, I, my logical part of my brain says, oh, you shouldn't start that anytime soon. You should wait until your other Hawkrun Hollow is finished. But I am dying to start Christmas at Hawkrun Hollow. Love, love, love that. So we'll see how long the squirrel can hold off on that. And then this is actually a lovely winter stitching. Absolutely beautiful winter wisdom by Cottage Garden. 
and I've had this one kitted up for a few years and I need to get that started. I have the box and everything. Oh, Tannenbaum by Brenda Gervais. And here's another one. Had this kitted up. My good friend sent me some linen for it. And I actually had a um, start on this. I'll insert a picture of it right here. I had stitched it on Lugana. And it was kind of like an orangey piece of Lugana. I didn't like it. So I, I passed that along. So I really want to get that one done. That is just a classic Christmas piece. It will never go out of style. I would love to start this and have it on the winter wall. Hands-on design. Let's talk winter. And of course snowman. Merry old soul. And then there's a snowman piece that goes with this in my fancy project bag. I started this a couple years ago on like a 46 count piece of confederate gray and I don't think that that's going to work um, so I might restart this one and I know I've told you about this before and I started it last year and I need to pick this up and finish it I would love to get them all finished um, and that's the stockings by Blackbird Designs uh, Brenda's from this Brendan the Serial Starter. I just love her little stockings by Blackbird Designs. This is the um, one I started last year and here is my progress on it. I think that other than always being a stitcher that likes big projects, my other hold up on these was I didn't have them kitted. And so when I want to sit down and stitch a small, which I've been better about lately, if it's not kitted up then I'm like, oh, you know, it just takes the wind out of my cells. And so I spent some time kidding these up this uh, season. And so I'm hoping that that will help me to get them done. I would really like to stitch, you know, like one a month, something like that. So now on to plans. These are um, things that I would for sure like to start and work on. And the first one, Lori talked about in her latest floss tube she did hers yesterday oh wasn't that so much eye candy i'll like be on my little path and i'll be so good and be like nope i'm not going to start any new starts and i she is my queen bee temptress tart i just whatever she's working on i of course want to work on and it's just it's fun to go along on the ride <laughs> but um we had talked about this recently and we were talking about doing a Christmas day start and so she's like let's do it and so we would love to um, work on this every day every 25th day of the year we're going to start on Christmas day the 25th and then every so that we can hopefully finish it by the end of the year um, the hashtag is 25th day stitch sal so it doesn't matter what chart you choose um we both are going to start paper snowflakes by brenda gervais but go ahead and grab your favorite christmas chart and start on it or work on it on christmas day and every 25th um i think what my plan is i thought about this last night is if i finish paper snowflakes i still want to um, stitch using that hashtag I'll just pick up a different uh, Christmas stitch and I might that might be when I start my Christmas at Hawk Run but I'm not sure we'll see so um, some other plans I for sure know that I feel confident in telling you about is um, I want to get back to this I've worked on it a little bit but not every day like I was before. And that is Mary 395 by Hands Across the Sea. Oh, I love this so much. It's a pleasure to work on it. And here is my progress so far. So I'm almost over to, I think it goes to about right there. I absolutely love this. This is on 36 count Mayflower Linen by r, &R with um, some Averisois silk. 
So I really want to get back to that. I feel confident that I'm going to be working on that quite a bit. And then on Christmas Eve, Eve, <laughs> I wanted to, so my friend Lily, she is a nurse and she is very sweetly working on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day so that other nurses can be home with their family and kiddos. And so we wanted to start a Christmas Day start, but that wasn't going to work for her schedule. So we are going to start Christmas Eve, Eve. So the 23rd, we're going to start Mary Snow by Hands Across the Sea. I am so excited about this chart. As soon as Nicola showed it, it it just it checks off all the boxes. And um, I will insert a picture here. I'm sure you've all seen it by now. But we are going to invite you to stitch with us. And Lily is Silky Quilt Farm on Instagram. And we are going to use the hashtag Mary Snow Sal. So if you'd like to start that with us, um, it'll, it's going to be a lot of fun. But in January, I'm going to be joining in on the Flea Market Quilt Along. And this is a stitch along that has a matching cross stitch chart from Lori Holt of Be My Bonnet. And Fat Quarter Shop is hosting a sal and a stitch along so you can make the quilt and the cross stitch together or you can just make one or the other. But I am going to be starting this in January. I know that uh, Nicole's Needleworks is as well. And many of you have messaged me telling me how excited you are on Instagram. This is going to be so fun. I have been pulling fabrics and I think I'm going to use Lori's Stitch fabric line. And then throw in some like maybe some Civil War prints. And just have fun with it. So, um, But they also have a kit so that you can make it exactly like the front cover. So please join us for that as well. My last stitchy plan, um, I've just been absolutely dying to get back to this project, and that is Mary Carr by Needlework Press. Oh, I am so in love with this piece. It's definitely one of my favorite samplers. I just saw that on Instagram this morning that Vicki with Needlework Press announced that this will be an early 2022 release. So yay, be looking forward to that. Here are all the called for threads, and then I added Country Redwood to the mix and Buckeye Scarlet as one of the reds. But they that color palette is so pretty. I love the greens, the called for greens, and it just is such a pretty palette. I've got that housed in my Minikin Simpson bag, all reds and creams. And I haven't worked on this since the last time I showed it to you. So I'm just, I've been working on fall and Christmas stitching, but I'm itching to get back to this. And that is being stitched on 36 count creme brulee by R&R. &R. Oh, it's so yummy. So I'll be looking forward to working on that tonight. I have some happy mail to share with you today. So if that is not your jam, that is all the stitching that I have to share with you. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for your friendships and this wonderful community. Um, I never know quite what to say when I show Happy Mail because I feel so humbled and honored to um, have received such generosity. I think that, um, like, I love seeing other floss tubers show their happy mail because it just reminds me that they're still good in this world especially the last couple of years um it, there's so many genuinely great hearted people out there and there's still a lot of good in this world um this first one when i received it in the mail i just chuckled because she tina sent this amazing card and in it it says uh, oh look squirrel <laughs> does she know me or what but it is the cutest wood needle minder. And even the back of it's cute. So I think you can use both as a needle minder. I can't wait to use that now that I've shown it to you. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. Um, and then Gracie, and I was actually just going to give her a shout out. Um, and then I got a card from her. So then I can talk about her a little bit more. But Gracie is has a, flu, a new floss tube um, within the last few months. And that is cross therapy here on floss tube. She is full of grace and thankfulness and 
just a genuinely kind-hearted person. I love her sense of humor and I love the projects that she works on. So go and get, if you haven't checked her channel out, it is Cross Therapy and her name is Gracie, but she sent me the cutest card. Um, Gracie and I have been friends for a while now and um, she's just a sweetheart. And she gave me a, I think it's for the back of your um, project. You can put it on the back of the frame and then she sent a cute sticker. So thank you so much, Gracie, and go check her out. She she really is a pleasure to spend time with. The other floss tuber that I um, just recently discovered and have been enjoying is Rachel with Needle and Flax. And I love all of her projects. I love her vintage um, style and her love of samplers. And I need to check out her linen as well. It looks amazing. Um, and then the next piece that I received... As soon as the um, package arrived, I knew that there was something awesome inside. And this is from Cindy. I pointed out earlier on the tree, but I grabbed it to show you. And that is this tiny little stitches. Um, I tied the trim in a bow to make it an ornament so I could hang it on the tree. But year round, I'll just put it like in my cabinet with my red and white sampler collection and red and white things. Can you hear Gus in the background? <laughs> um, but I, the one thing that I will say about homemade gifts is when you make um, a stitch or sew a gift for someone that is a stitcher or quilter, you know that that, that will be treasured. Um, and so I absolutely, I just, I love homemade gifts. They're, they're the best. There's nothing that can beat it. And then my last um, Happy Mail is quite something, and I I don't know even know what to say when it got here. It came on the perfect day, and it came from my friend Trish, and I, I just, I love it so much. Um, I have had it, she sent it in November, and I've had it on my cross-stitch chair draped over it, so it's been like a warm hug and just a reminder of good in this world and kind-hearted genuine people um, but she sent me this quilt and I love it it is absolutely beautiful all those creamy browns oh it's just the perfect I it just speaks to my heart and on my last video I had the giveaway for the 2022 Be In My Bonnet um, Planner by Lori Holt. And the winner for that is Carla Rowley. I will put a comment on your comment. And if you will email me your address, I'll get that out to you. Congratulations, Carla. And so then this time I wanted to give away some Christmas charts. These have all been um, gifted by sweet viewers. And um, so I have some quite a few here. The first one is Santa's House Prairie Schooler. If you're interested in receiving this one, say Santa's House in your comment. The Bells on Christmas Day by Blackbird Designs. Just say the Bells on Christmas. Um, the Night Before, I almost said the Nightmare, <laughs> The Night Before Christmas by Prairie Schooler. Just say the, um, the night before Christmas. <laughs> and then um, this one, I absolutely love this chart, but it was a start and um, I decided to no longer work on this, but it's an awesome chart and I just would love to share it with you. And that is Holiday Quaker by Leela Studio. And just say um, Holiday Quaker. This one's Madame Chantilly. And I don't know how to pronounce it. Just use Chantilly in your comment. So cute with Santa in the hot air balloon. And then the uh, last one is Someday at Christmas by Heartstring Samplery. And just use Someday at Christmas. I wanted to thank you all for joining it with me today and all of your sweet, wonderful comments. I really appreciate all of your 
friendships. I read every single comment. I just treasure this community so much and it makes our hobby even that much more special. I hope that you have a wonderful, amazing holiday season. Whether, no matter what you celebrate, I hope you get time with family, with friends, people that you hold dear. And most of all, I hope you get lots of cross-stitch time. Until next time, happy stitching.